Greetings, Diocese of Olympia and all who may be watching. A little over a year ago, we embarked together on a journey of discernment and listening. This journey was sparked by a vow I made in the Episcopate election of 2007 in which I stated I would probably leave this position in 10 to 12 years. If you've watched the videos I've made about this and or attended many of the Walk Again listening sessions of this past year, you know about how all this transpired. I felt it very important that I honor that vow and that we review it carefully together. I appreciate the way the Standing Committee and especially its president, the Reverend R.A.N. Davison, took up that challenge and has led us in that process this past year. I continue to believe what I said at the beginning of this journey that regardless of the outcome, we would learn and grow from the process. I believe that has happened. It has certainly happened for me. I was also clear in my mind and heart and in my words throughout the year that we would most likely not do this perfectly and that we would find, as we always do, ways we could do it better the next time. The data from our year of listening, along with countless messages, sharing words of discouragement and encouragement, and an immense generosity on behalf of the many faithful in this diocese willing to be part of this conversation have been priceless to me in my discernment. In short, it has led me to believe that we should walk on together, at least for a time. I can only claim this for myself, but what I want to say now is that I'm still, and very much still, enthusiastic about our work together. More pointedly and more personally, I still love working in this vocation for you and for the church. I know I have many failings in this work and I will continue to have them, but I do strive daily to do the best I can and to be the best I can for all of you, and I would like to continue that. There's still so much yet to be done. At our Walk Again gatherings this past year and in my sharing with you during that time, I've shared the first words I heard after I told the governing bodies that it was probably time for me to leave. It was, quote, it feels like we just got started, unquote. And those words have continued to ring true to me. In some ways, it always feels that way when we collectively are on an important mission together. But this specific pilgrimage we share definitely feels that way to me. There are many good turns and accomplishments and many things we have yet to really address enough or make headway in that do deserve our concentrated effort and do not deserve the instability of a search and transition. I believe this decision offers us all a chance to set some new priorities and essentially set out a second episcopacy, if you will. In the first, we set some good solid foundations in place, focusing on the local and the leaders in those local contexts, giving skills and tools to bring health and strength to our shared mission. We have lowered assessments, trained for leadership and development, streamlined and reimagined the Office of Bishop Roll, and put the diocese on a sound financial footing. Now I believe we can focus on some of the weightier and more life transforming issues for our church, such as true growth of the church and not continued decline, such as parity and leadership and gender, culture and color, such as finding more ways to give from our abundance to the greater Episcopal Church and Christianity, and to continue to envision and live into the church of tomorrow. As I said in the walk agains, in the years ahead, I see us moving from maintaining to growing, living into and owning our innovation and sharing that with the greater church, and being a prophetic voice in the church and for Western Washington and beyond. All of those are systemic changes, and systemic change takes time and effort and does not often move at the pace we would wish, nor sometimes in all the directions we wish. That has and will continue to bring challenge and frustration as the needs are great, in many cases long-standing and sometimes unacknowledged. By being forthright, generous, and expectant about these challenges, I'm convinced we can make the space for deeper discussions and hopefully an openness to explore new ways and approaches to many of these issues. Some things are obvious about this decision as a cisgender straight white male who's choosing to stay, 
I'm not making room for new leadership, especially persons of color and or female leadership. That fact is not lost on me. It was a big part of my discernment. I do hope we can use this time to prepare even more for that as a real possibility when the transition does occur. I do believe we as a people still have work to do in that area as well. We are seeing a most welcome change in the makeup of the House of Bishops in race and gender, but certainly we have a long way to go. One thing this year of pilgrimage and my sabbatical of pilgrimage have taught me is that with each step we are changed. We arrive at every new turn or hill or stream new and different. Each day we leave behind the person we were yesterday. As a diocese, a collective journeying together, we also live that reality. We are not the same as we were 13 years ago. And certainly in all the ways we are changed, the judgment as to whether those changes are for good or ill are up for debate. However, the overwhelming feedback seems to be that we are heading in the right direction, that we are focused on the right things or trying to be. That seems worth continuing, at least for a time, and I offer myself to do so. I would also say the intent is that this second Episcopate will be different, focused in different directions. The staff will continue to be reorganized for that difference and focus, and even my role is going to evolve differently than the time behind us. More on all of that later, but for now I simply want to say I would like to continue in this role walking with all of you. One of the most powerful determinants in my decision was the joy and blessing I have received in being part of our work together in this place at this time. For that blessing, I am deeply grateful and I thank you. Blessings to each and every one of you.